Let's get into it there, folks. Um, dealing with a few things right at this moment in time. So... Okay, there we go. So, I was dealing with a few things going on right at this moment in time, trying to, you know, I was able to get my second monitor up, but it is currently in a really, it's not exactly a range great, so. Um. You know, I keep on thinking that, you know, I need to, um, hmm. how am I going to change? Need to duplicate the displays. Well, no, that's not really what I want either. Sorry, I'm kind of messing around with uh, I display settings right at this moment in time. Um. Oops, I almost forgot. I need to actually get um, stage up and running. Uh, plus, I don't know if uh, maybe I because I got started late. Uh, maybe Blackheart um, got a little nervous and didn't really want to start either. Or, you know, maybe he's kind of dealing with his own thing as well. I mean, it's it's not, you know, I've, I haven't exactly been um, uh, that reliable uh, recently. So I can understand him, you know, maybe backing out a little bit. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Um, or, you know, basically saying, hey... No, not today. Uh, we didn't do anything yesterday. Um, so for those of you that were like, going, oh man, I really want, I was into the, uh, um, you know, I'm really into Unreal, you know, re really would like to um, you know. Okay. bit better let's see identify still kind of showing that as mm. the screen here does not seem to want to be adjust itself for its overall size here. It's not like scaling down or anything along those lines. And that makes things a little difficult. So let's see. Okay, that's better. Okay. Um, get that screen back up there. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, now. Sorry, I'm uh, been wanting to kind of move some things around anyway. Um, with what I've been kind of wanting to do. Um, 
so this this makes things a little bit easier now so i found i found an adapter uh it was uh it was my roommate's adapter but you know i was able to uh find a, a vga to display port adapter so now i can uh, get a second display going so that's that's very helpful um um, now I can kind of um, keep an eye on, like I can still have chat here, but I can still have my OBS over there. So that's good. Um, there's still some things that I need to take care of, um, though it's not. It's not perfect, but um, hmm. I don't see Blackheart starting up, so I have a funny feeling that he might have, he might be done with things right at this moment in time. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, okay. I send him a message, see if he's, if he's okay or not. You know, maybe he might be doing, well, I mean, he might be tackling quite a few things on his, um, right at this moment in time, so, you know, like, for example, you know, I've, I've been, I've been trying to do a lot of things right at this moment in time, it feels like my, um, I'm kind of running around with my head chopped off like a chicken <laughs> right at this moment in time but um okay so that's taken care of that's taken care of don't really need that anymore uh i mean we can we can ignore that one for right now uh i already uploaded the videos to youtube so yeah Doing pretty good so far. Okay, I see that he's uh, started up his stream. So he was probably going. Okay, um, I, I might as well just you know maybe maybe he was along the lines of like you know Jim's not starting up his stream. I might as well just ignore it or something like that. So so you know I get it. Um, you know, uh, bear in mind that um, you know. The arrangement that we have right at this point is that he would, um, you know, he doesn't normally start at this particular time. So for those of you that, you know, maybe you're, you're maybe you're not really familiar with, with his streams or anything along those lines or, you know, from, from what he's done in the past, but um, around this particular moment in time, he would still be like, doing stuff at home and stuff like that so oh there he is i see him in the in the stage let me go ahead and invite him to speak there we go hey there bud how you doing okay uh one second let me get you let me make sure that i'm have you unmuted on my obs there we go you doing okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I just kind of fell asleep on my chair. That's all. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I was I was kind of running late myself, so you know, uh, I was I was a little worried that I was uh, going. Eh, are you gonna be able to like you know step on in and join me on this? Because you know I was kind of like, okay, I'm starting at two o'clock. That's normally when we do Unreal. Normally, I have the stream I've been running, you know, um, you know, running at at one o'clock. So you have like, you know, you're you're like 
comfortable in that you know I'm already like streaming you're aware that I'm active so you know there's no confusion on your part that you know I, hey I'm active <laughs> so um, but I'm glad that you were able to join me on this yeah, you know. yeah. yeah you, like, heard a little like notification on my head said and that woke me up okay <laughs> Understandable, understandable. Uh, so, uh, I'm, you know, I was just letting people know that I'm, can, uh, you know, I was a little, you know, I'm, I'm being a little crazy right at this moment in time because I was able to find a um, adapter for my second monitor. So I finally got the second monitor back up and running. So, so that's nice. Um, so now I can. Now I don't have to worry too much about, like, um, like I can keep an eye on chat right in front of me, but, you know, the OBS is, you know, over to, on my left-hand side, so, um, you know, it's much like uh, how you have your laptop, I think, your, your computer and your laptop set up, so, yep. so it makes things a little bit Hello, easier. Ron, how you doing? So, um... Okay, so, um, shall we get started on some Unreal Engine studying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, oh, pardon me, I gotta blow my nose. Be right back. Right now, I'm just gonna be doing for a little bit, um, Unreal study session with a Strange Road Gym, and... About like forty five minutes I will like cut it, go get something to eat, and then come back for Rebel Galaxy. That's what I normally do when it comes to the going through these documentations. Alright. Sorry about that. Um Yeah, and I'm I'll be doing some after the uh if they're unreal for me, I'll be doing some video uploads and then some more Warframe later on tonight. So, um, but let's see. Uh, we had finished off. We did the normalized three D stereo sounds, uh, but we did not go through the attenuation air absorption, right? No. Okay. So. Okay. Um. Uh, did you get any kind of, you know, comments or messages or anything like that on any of your videos mm, yet or no? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. I figured I'd, you know, ask before we really get started. So, you know, if there was ever like a comment, you know, posted to our videos for Unreal or anything like that, then we can, we can like address it like right at the very beginning so or like you know kind of go over it at the very beginning but mm -hmm. um yeah but i haven't received anything either so i figured i'd uh um we'll wait for for later then <laughs> well i mean when one comes if if anything comes then we'll address it then but for now yeah Okay, so uh, attenuation air absorption. Let's get started here. This section defines how an algorithm that attempts to model the effect air absorption has on the sound be has on the sound behaves, namely that higher frequencies decay quicker than lower frequencies relative to distance. Really? Okay, interesting. Um. Kind of curious as to how that would, you know, how that would be the case. Hmm. Maybe because it, the high frequency is expend or is using a lot more energy, so therefore might uh, dissipate faster. Maybe. Mm, I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. 
Not sure. Uh, you can define the distance range within which the filter will be applied and then use a, the low pass cutoff frequency settings to determine how much filtering you want. Uh, the filter will. Just inside. Yeah, don't worry about it. I don't have those alerts active either. I haven't had time to set those up. Hopefully, eventually, I do have the VStream alerts up soon. Mm, cool. Um, let's see. The filter will interpolate between the min and max cutoff frequency as you move between the min and max distances, as well as a low pass filter for modeling air absorption. You also have a high pass filter that could be used to reduce the perceived size of the sound relative to distance. Okay. Um, once again, we're dealing with. Uh, low pass and high pass filters whatever those are not sure mm -hmm. not sure myself um it's meant uh, according to this as well as low pass filter for modeling air absorption so so maybe that's what they are meant for to um, to determine whether or not the air will absorb um, like higher frequencies more and then like leave the low frequencies able to uh, pass through uh, easier or maybe the exact reverse let the high pa no, let the high frequencies go further and let the low frequencies kind of die out quicker I don't know I don't know not sure what what the filters are all about, but um, uh, let's see. Anything else there that we can maybe get an educated discussion about, or you know, figure out a little bit more? Uh, I don't really see anything any, anything that you might be able to figure. Hmm, not sure. I might need to look up if something explains what low pass and high pass is actually is. Oh. I'm not yeah. sure what how that filter even works. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, um, maybe maybe they will explain it later, but, you know, obviously we have hit, you know, Roblox before concerning this, so, and we haven't really gotten any answers concerning that, so, um, or at least nothing that really, like, it'd probably be great if they had, like, some form of, like, linking, like, hey, here's a keyword that you guys really should know about. And it will link to like a definition or something along those lines, you know. So, or you know, some like little pop up that you know you can just kind of put your mouse over and it will like show like a little window saying, like, hey, this is what this is all about, you know. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. but obviously, they, they, they don't do that, so <sighs> oh well, uh. Yes, we'll just move on. Yeah. Uh, in the image below, the green circle represents the min distance and the red circle the max distance. Any filter settings will be applied and inter interpolated between these two distances. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in other words... Um, anything outside of it wouldn't necessarily hear anything because the air absorption would basically reduce it down to zero. Pretty much. So... Uh, 
and obviously the air absorption will reduce down the sound volume as it as it proceeds outwards. Although, um, if you had, um, like say animals that are, you know, more in tuned with hearing at you know lower, higher frequencies, then you might need to have. Um, in a sense, uh, like different sound, um, like maybe different like sound filters or something along those lines that would, you know, one you would use for like maybe humans and another you might you want to use for, you know, animals in a way. Not quite sure how you'd be able to really go about doing that, but, you know, um, I don't even know if it's even possible. No, uh, true. Indeed. Um, well, I I don't know. Um, I would figure that it would be possible. It's just, um, it might be a little bit of a mess because, um, like you would have to have the, um, you know how the circles are kind of surrounding that set the object there then you'd have to have something pretty much like right on top of the exact same location you know that has like different circles from that and you know you as a developer would have to know the difference between the two you know like for example if like a new programmer came in and was like on what the hell is this what the hell is these two different you know um um, attenuation, audio, you know, air absorption settings. What the hell? You know, why, why even bother with these? You know, and decides to kill off one of them, then you know, you'll be, <laughs> you know, then like say dogs wouldn't be able to hear anything at all, or have like different settings for it to, you know, I don't know. But I wouldn't be too surprised if you can set it up. Uh, because you can set up like different. I guess you could use like priorities on it. You put one on top of the other. Like you could set one to have a higher priority, so that you simulate it. Well, no, no. What I'm saying is, is that like um, like dogs have a higher sense of hearing, right, than than humans do. So, or at least, but you know, I don't know what the exact uh processes for that or you know like what the range is overall um but i would imagine that their minimum and maximum would be um uh larger overall than what a human would have right mm -hmm. so you'd probably want to have like two of them uh, two kind of i guess classes stacked on top of each other in the same exact spot one for human hearing and one for dog hearing, for example, right? If you wanted to kind of try to simulate that. Um, and then you have the human only able to hear the, like the human class hearing sound, and the dog would only be hearing the dog sound class thing. So, which we probably could try to work and see, and get it and get it to work but obviously that's that's a lot of you know potential work there um but i mean if we want to have it realistic like that then we might want to consider it but that's of course if we ever do a game along those lines which <laughs> we may or may not do mm. right that's another game we make exactly but I mean, it's, it gives a, a rough idea as to you know what um, the potentials anyway. So okay, enable air absorption. Okay, this property is used to enable or disable air absorption model. If true, the sound will be processed using a low-pass filter whose cutoff point varies relative to the listener's distance from the sound's source, as configured by the settings below. 
If false, then the sound will go unprocessed. Unprocessed? What do you mean by unprocessed? You mean it just won't be active at all? Or unprocessed in that, you know, it will never have a low pass filter and it will just kind of continue for as long as you want it to. I'm kind of leaning towards the latter there. But, you know, I don't know. They're not really defining that very much. Mm, not sure. Now we don't know what low pass filter does to begin with, so. True, true. Um, well, I mean, if if the low pass filter is meant to like do an error absorption, supposedly, maybe you know, again, I don't know. Um, then, uh, as I was, you know, as I mentioned before, a couple days back, um. The sound waves, when it travels, it loses um, it loses energy due to trying to pass through air, and it loses energy just by you know heat, you know expends heat, you know while it, you know for for its energy, right? Um, so um, so that's why sound. Um, is you know it sounds lower you know the further away you are from it okay depending on like how loud the sound is right you know like uh like right now you know seeing that i live you know miles from an airport you know i'm not hearing the airplane super loud but it doesn't necessarily mean that you know this those sounds from the airport are completely gone right you know, I can still kind of hear like a slight sound of those airplanes, you know, going to and fro. So, but, um, you know, the sound is so low from where I live comparatively. Now, if I was like living right next door to the airport, then I'd be hearing it like, you know, <laughs> shaking my house or something along those lines, right? Um, yeah. be, because the sound is just so great, and the the how loud that sound is. But because of the distance, it loses energy. It loses, you know, because of the air, it loses energy based on the heat. So, so it doesn't sound as loud. If there wasn't any air absorption, then you know, potential for me hearing it just as loud here as it was, you know, would be like next to the airport, then. Yikes. <laughs> um, you know, we'd have to basically create it. Uh, well, I mean, if there was no air absorption whatsoever anywhere on the planet, then that would mean that the entire planet would be just deafening, right? Because the loudest sounds would never, well, obviously, you know, it might, it might lose energy due to heat and stuff like that but i mean if if there was no air absorption whatsoever then the sound would just be like constant no matter what so the loudest like explosions and the like would just be reverberating throughout the entire world and just kind of adding to it and adding to it and adding to it and it's like ooh, wow okay you know Potentially, you know, I'm. I don't know. I'm. Yeah. I'm not a. I'm not a physicist or anything along those lines. So I wouldn't really know exactly if that's true. But eh, whatever. Um, but it would be interesting. <laughs> All right. Minimum distance range. This property defines the minimum distance from the sound source at which the filter should be applied. You should experiment with different settings to find the point that best suits the sound you're using, but a good starting point would be based on the inner range of your attenuation distance settings. Um, Okay, so 
Um, so if we're using, if, if the low pass filter is kind of referring to the air absorption, then, then it's basically saying, hey, um, if you're this close to the object, minimum distance, then you're going to be hearing it at full power no matter what. You know, there's no amount of distance is going to reduce down the amount of noise that you're hearing from it, right? So, like, if you're inside a factory, it's really difficult to not hear how loud a factory is unless you get further away from it, right? Right. So eventually you do get to a point where you get further and further away from it then it basically says okay here's here's where you put in the low pass filter the air absorption maybe i would imagine that's that's what i'm kind of gathering from this minimum distance range do you agree with that or well of course you know we still again we don't know what the low pass filter is but but do you agree I mean, I guess we'll know for sure once we give it a try. Yeah. True. True. Uh, max distance range. This property defines the maximum distance from the sound source at which the filter should be applied. You should experiment with different settings to find the point that best suits the sound you're using, but a good starting point would be based off the fall-off range of your attenuation distance settings. Hmm. Now I'm kind of wondering, are we good? All right, what this I'm... This is like, the minimum is looking at the picture, it's the green circle, while the maximum is the red circle. Right. Like maybe that's what you're defining with those. Well, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, that's what I'm assuming based off of the... You know, the main topic right at the moment is the attenuation air absorption. So we're kind of going through the, uh, if you look above the picture, there's like a screenshot of all the settings, enable air absorption, minimum distance, max distance, and so on and so forth. Um, so... Beyond, like this thing, okay, how far do you want you here? And okay, where do you just want to cut it off? Yeah, you completely. Yeah. Um... In which... It would depend what, on, again, on our level design there. Yeah. Um, but it does, I, I do have a question here. Um, now, I, you know, again, I'm, I'm just speaking out loud. So obviously, you know, if you don't have an answer, you know, it's understandable. Um, but, you know, if, if you can think of a solution then maybe we can we can figure this out but um so i'm looking at this and it says max distance range for the you know the attenuation air absorption right um a good starting point would be based off the fall off range of your attenuation distance settings so there's something different between the distance air absorption and the distant or uh, and the or the attenuation air absorption and the attenuation distance settings so um so that's why it's like hmm i'm, I'm kind of confused along those lines like are, are we dealing with like two different like max settings concerning the attenuation and therefore um, could we could we get you know a scenario where the air absorption kind of stops prior to the attenuation distance settings so it basically stops absorbing after that point but you can still kind of hear it is that what I'm hearing? Is that is that my thought line here? Hmm. Am I am I? You know, 
am I maybe overthinking it a little bit? Like, will the air absorption basically, you know, absorb everything no matter what? So even if the attenuation distance settings might be further out, the air absorption will just wipe out the sound no matter what, clear it out, so you won't really even hear anything beyond it anyway? Or something else going on there? What do you, what do you think? Do you have any thought lines on that at all? Mm. Let me see. I mean, if you don't know, you know, or if you like, if you're only, like, yeah. if I only like, yes, like past that max distance if the cutoff is still past that point maybe the volume is going to be just very low but consistent maybe like maybe like a I'm low tell that part off point that you configure like maybe to like just like a low rumble or something like that like yeah like something like that yeah but just like very low and consistent like its volume doesn't change until you reach that max distance okay yeah i was i was kind of wondering about that uh, myself i was you know um obviously we'd have to we'd probably want to try to test that out at some point but you know again that might be dependent on the on the game um but it'd be interesting to see what they do with that you know um You know, yeah, and if, have to test it to be sure. Yeah, and even then, you know, um, you know, we might, we ourselves might be like, we might confuse ourselves a little bit and go, wait, I'm, are we, are we actually hearing a difference in volume or something like that? You know, are we hearing a, like a consistent volume at this point? Hmm. You know that kind of thing you know we might actually like confuse ourselves as well along those lines you know because sometimes our brain might play tricks on us and go you know no no you're you know you're definitely hearing a lower volume as you further away you go you know blah 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 so i don't know um you know our mind could be you know potentially playing tricks on us a little bit on that so Hard to say. Hard to say for me. Hmm. Well, shall we move on? Or do you want to kind so, of look, yeah. think about that a little bit more? No, let's, let's move on. Okay. Uh, low pass cutoff frequency minimum. Um, okay. This, this might actually kind of tell us a little bit more about the low pass and high pass so uh, yeah. other, otherwise you know i'd almost say like you know maybe we should just go ahead and skip this but this might actually tell us a little bit more about the filters so, so uh, this property defines the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter when at the minimum distance range you should experiment with different settings to find the value that best suits the sound you're using but given that the reality there is little air absorption effect when in close proximity to the sound, higher values here work well. Okay. So it definitely feels as though they are really f um, focused on the low pass filter being uh, associated with an air absorption effect. They're really kind of driving that home a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Um, again, whether or not that's true or not, you know, not sure, but it's, it definitely feels like they're basically saying, um, whenever you see a low pass filter, you can basically replace it with a air absorption, but I don't know, you know, they're, if they were, um, you know, if that was, indeed the 
the, you know, if, if, if that's indeed the right interpretation of it, then why even use air absorption at all? Or, you know, have uh, the low pass filter. Why even bother with that? You know, why not just call it air absorption filter? So, I don't know. I'm not quite sure the difference there, but. I'm not sure either. You know, what was, what's the point of having a different word if, <laughs> if, if it, you know, if, uh, I mean, I mean, let's face it, you know, um, uh, a lot of us create up, uh, you know, create words just to try to make things easier or, you know, for like different meanings and stuff like that. So, I don't know. Um, maybe it meant something way back in the day, like when they first started making mixers or something like that. And now... They analyzed it more and said, uh, "This is this is more about air absorption or something." You know, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um. All right. Uh, low pass cutoff frequency max. This property defines the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter when at the max distance range, as defined above. You should experiment with different settings to find the value that best suits the sound you're using, but given that in reality there is more air absorption effect when further away from the sound, lower values here work well. Okay. Um, well, I mean, more air absorption effect the further away from the sound. I mean, The wording there is a little off because, yeah. um, you know, air, you know, on, well, hmm. uh, on one hand, you would think, hey, you know, the air pressure is consistent around the entire world and therefore um, it should be the, you know, the same amount of consistent air absorption no matter where you go. And therefore, you know, there wouldn't necessarily be, you know, more Air, absor uh, air absorption effect, it'd be more of a consistent air absorption effect the further away you go from the sound, right? Um, but here's the thing, uh, you know, at the same time, you know, air isn't exactly consistent either, you know. Um, you know, otherwise, we wouldn't really have any cold fronts or warm fronts or anything along those lines. You know, when you have when you have weather systems kind of passing through, you know, the the clouds rolling and and all that kind of jazz. I mean, that's just, you know, um, uh, like what is it? A uh, warm air flowing towards cold air, kind of effect going on. So it's just the it's just the flowing of air. So you might have a little bit more of a higher concentration in one particular area. Um, you know, you also have higher elevation. So at a higher elevation, you wouldn't have really any air whatsoever at a higher elevation than, say, like, you know, at sea level, right? So, so if you were to do, say, like... Um, for example, let's say you, you create a game and the, uh, you have like a battle on a, like a, uh, a floating castle way up in the sky, right? Well, there wouldn't necessarily be a lot of air to absorb the sounds, right? So, so yeah. Which makes me wonder, does the sound travel further in up in the other upper atmosphere or less? Um, hmm. um, because I mean, design, like I can think of a few uses to making it higher and 
a few in some one making it lower on the actual maximum card off. So think of a, a few uses as for that. Yeah. Especially if yeah. we're making like a fantasy world and uh, yeah, reward <laughs> reward would really not matter. Yeah. Well, it it makes me kind of wonder. It's like, you know, on one hand, you kind of need air in order to actually hear, right? You know, the yeah. the the sound waves are kind of traveling through the air, but at the uh, on another on the flip side of that, the sound waves doesn't like lose energy in the low air as well. So it's very. You know, I'm not quite sure on the physics of that. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, I would, I would have to actually talk. The, the less the air there is, the less you can hear, supposedly. Right, but you'd, but the sound wouldn't necessarily diminish in due to air absorption if there's like less air for it to be to absorb the energy from the sound waves so so would basically the sound kind of travel in the upper atmosphere further i don't know i would say like because there are less air particles to balance amongst each other it would probably fall off faster yeah i don't know it's one of those things where it's like, boy, it's, you know, on, on one hand, it's like, that's an interesting idea, but at the same time, it's like, you know, um, obviously, this is going to enter real world physics that we may never even touch upon in our game. So, you know, but still, um, it might be something that we might need to consider, you know. Who knows? Maybe five, ten games from now. You know, you never know. <laughs> you can make a game based like on Earth, and yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, you never know. Uh, we we may do something along those lines, or you know, an Earth-like atmosphere. You know, because a lot of let, let's face it. I mean, even in like um, like fantasy games, like you know. If you like to do a D and D session or something like that, you know, you always have, you always place the heroes in an Earth-like, you know, world in some fashion or another, like, um, you know, it's very rare to have like a, you know, um, a dungeon master that will basically say, okay, we're on a planet that is all volcanic. <laughs> Good luck with the atmosphere. <laughs> There's no air or something like that. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, how, how do you, how do you deal with a game like that? You know, that kind of thing. You know, that's, that requires a lot more uh, physics than, uh, than, than uh, a regular gamer might be able to handle. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud, so. All right. Moving on? Yeah. All right. So the high-pass cutoff frequency men. This property defines the cutoff frequency of the high-pass filter, wherever that is, when at the minimum distance range as defined above. You should experiment with different settings you find to find the value that best suits the sound you're using but subtle values work best here for the most part. Given that you will likely want the sound to feel large when up close, lower values here work well. Hmm. I wonder if the high pass and low pass filter is basically this, in a, same, in a sense, the same thing, like the air absorption, but uh, maybe you have Maybe they're kind of talking about like um, high pass for high pressure and low pass for low pressure. Maybe I don't know. I'm, don't I'm, know. I'm just thinking out loud here. I don't, you know, uh, trying trying to find you know some you know think thinking it through to maybe try to find some semblance of truth. But obviously, if anybody has any information, 
please feel free to give it to us. <laughs> please feel free to put it in our chat right now during the streams or um, in the comment sections when we upload these videos. That would be fantastic. So, um, because that might help out, you know, our understanding of sound a little bit better. And therefore, we might not necessarily be completely confused if we're like tackle, trying to tackle a sound problem in our game, you know, in the future. And suddenly we're like, but how, we're trying to f find this exact sound. How, how are we able to get this? You know, we don't understand. Or, you know, maybe we're like changing the value, but we're not really understanding why it works. So, and it's better to, it's better to understand why it works than just kind of going, uh, I'm just going to change settings here and there and hope that it works. It's like, that doesn't really help us. <laughs> so, um, okay. Um, let me get through these last three sections here. Uh, to get to the attenuation listener focus, and then we'll cut it off there. Sound good? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> so the high pass cutoff frequency max, this property defines the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter when at the max distance range as defined above. You should experiment with different settings to find the value that best suits the sound you're using. The subtle values work best here, blah, 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 for the most part, to make your sound feel smaller in size and less dominant when at a distance, higher values here work well. Okay. Um, I do f question why they're saying sound feels smaller in size and the sound feels large. Not quite sure exactly what they mean exactly on that. Maybe the sound waves? But how does it feel large or feel small? That doesn't, I don't know. Kind of confused about that, but. Um, moving on, or do you have any, yeah. do you have any like maybe potential educated guesses along that lines or? Not really, no. Okay. Uh, enable log frequency scaling. This property is used to enable or disable the application of a logarithmic scale to the f filter cutoff frequency values as they are interpolate, interpolated relative to the listener position. Depending on your settings, you may find the default linear scale produces some extreme and unnatural sounding results. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> linear scale would probably do that. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, if so, you can enable the large scale, which should smooth out the changes as it will produce a perpetually linear frequency swap. Ah. Wait, what? Okay, that session's a little confusing. Um, that kind of threw me off a little bit there. Not quite sure what the ending of that statement is referring to, really. Um, mm, not sure. Hmm. <clears throat> all right, well, uh, and we can guess all we want, but you know, we're probably going to need some help on this section for anybody that uh, knows more about sound design. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the large frequency scaling. I mean, obviously, you know, we'll, we know about logarithmic and linear scale for the most part, but, you know, why it does the perpetually linear frequency sweep is kind of confusing for me, but Oh, moving on. Yeah. Uh, absorption me method. This property is used to determine whether you want to use either the inbuilt scaling function, log or linear from above, 
or whether you want to create your own custom curve on how the interpolation is scaled over the filtering distance. You have two choices. Uh, linear, uh, this uses the inbuilt scaling function, either linear or logarithmic, depending on the property above. I mean, wouldn't that be three choices? You know, linear, logarithmic, or custom? So this seems a little bit this already feels a little odd, but um, or we have custom. This enables you to create your own custom scaling curves for the low pass and high pass filters independently. So if <clears throat> if the low pass and high pass filters are air absorption and maybe it maybe it is, you know, in terms of like the low pressure and high pressure scales, maybe, you know, and just again, uh, speaking out loud, um, then maybe you want to <clears throat> have like a really steep drop off for, um, for low filter, um, meaning like, you know, as soon as that sound goes off, it, you know, suddenly drops. So you have to be like really close to that, you know, to that sound before, you know, completely drops off and you can barely hear it anymore. Or, you know, you can have like a, um, high pressure where it's like, you know, you have all the air in the world and you can hear it for miles, blah, blah, blah. And just, you know, you have a, uh, what's, what's the visual from up above, uh, you have more of a log reverse, you know, style of a high pass filter or something like that. You know, I don't know. Um, but okay. Uh, so. That's the end of the uh, attenuation air absorption. Um, I guess tomorrow we'll continue on with the attenuation listener focus. Yeah. Um, quite a bit still left on the attenuation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, we are getting a fair amount of information from it although a lot of it's still very confusing um, yeah but um obviously you know um depending on how realistic we want the the sounds to be then um like if we were doing like an arcade game, like say Pac-Man or Galaga or you know uh, Space Invaders or something like that, we wouldn't really care about this. You know, yeah. we wouldn't really care about like, hey, you know, our sound is you know dropping off or something like that. I mean, we could try to do something along those lines. That would be a little weird on those style arcade games, but I mean, we could try to do that. Um, uh, matter of fact, you know, someone did create a game that is very, um, that's, that's styled in the, you know, in, in like, you know, in a Pac-Man style game, uh, but they p put a horror element to it, you know, a 3D Pac-Man style, but, um, you know, when you're uh, traveling around, it you know the uh, you can kind of hear the the monsters getting closer to you if you're if you're getting closer to it kind of thing. Um, so, uh, what what was it? What was that game called? It's like I think it's familiar to me. I think it's like. Dark Descent or something like that. Um, no, that was it. Um, 
Let's see. Um, Pac-Man Horror. Well, that shows me a lot of uh, really this uh, uh, creepy dark deception. That's what I'm, that's what it's called. Oh, deception. That one that doesn't make more sense. Yeah. Um, basically, in in the game Dark Deception, um, they give you like um like three D Pac Man levels in a sense where um, you know, you're basically in the eyes of Pac-Man, okay, and you're going around collecting all the, all the pellets that are around the map, right? Um, but in the very first level, you're basically being chased by these, uh, by, you know, uh, evil monkeys that, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you, you know, they look like the monkeys, the the toy monkeys with the symbols. They go, <laughs> but in this case, they are like carrying knives coming after you. So, um, and that's like the first level. So, you know, um, and the maps are, you know, pretty large overall. Um, so, definitely an interesting game, I must say. Um, it's just the um like on, on one hand it's like you know i i understand why they went about doing it but on the other hand it doesn't really it it kind of sucks as well in that you know basically they had every level of that game the dark deception uh is like a dlc so if you want to move on to the next level, you have to purchase their next like DLC level of it. And on one hand, it's like, okay, you know, that, that makes sense. They're putting a lot of time and effort into, you know, making the level, you know, testing it out, making sure that it works properly and stuff like that. They're, they're adding new art assets and stuff like that to each of the new levels. So, I mean, in some ways it is a new DLC you know, it's a new, um, it's a new style of game, different, you know, might have like different mechanics to it, different monster mechanics to it and stuff like that. So, so on one hand, it's like, you know, slightly different, but on the other hand, um, uh, from, from what I understand, they don't really, um, they charge a lot for those levels. So it doesn't like invite people to really want to buy those DLCs. Like if they were like super cheap, like you know a buck or something like that, then people might want to purchase them a little bit more. I, I would figure uh, yeah. because because you know you're basically saying, hey, um, you know, uh, you bought the main game. Thanks for that. Here's here's a little bit. You know of extra content for you for you know for cheap right um yeah. but from what i understand the dlcs are a little bit more expensive uh here yeah. let me let me see most cases it shouldn't be like if it's going to be expensive you better be giving them a lot yeah. You're making just uh, expenses just for a small DLC, which is a f uh, it's just a few things, then yeah, it's not worth it. Okay, so the the first level is actually free. Yeah. Um, the the first chapter that you can play is is free. So I mean, that's that's pretty nice, right? Um, mm -hmm. you know, um, pretty awesome. The you could purchase the, um, I guess, what they call the Dark Deception Complete, which I guess, you know, um, includes all their everything, like even like, you know, future levels as well. Um, but right now, it looks like they have four additional chapters. 
after the first one. Like, you, you play the free game, which is an interesting way of, like, um, enticing people in, right? You know, you, you, yeah. you bring out a free you game, you get a taste of the game, and if you really, really enjoy it, then, hey, you know, maybe, you know, put some money in towards, you know, helping them out with the additional chapters along those lines. It's a nice... It's a nice enticing method of of um, um, you know it's often a, a good strategy in in certain cases with uh, uh, with games right you know you give them a little bit of taste like a demo and you basically say you know hey if you want the if you want the rest of the game you gotta pay this much money um, and each of the chapters is seven bucks. So, um, you know, so chapter. You me, like each one better have something that's like worth it, like that makes it more interesting than the demo. Otherwise, yeah. Just find a reskinned level. True. They, better, they gotta add like enough to make each chapter different. Yeah. Yeah, which I mean, they did, they did, um, but it's uh, like they they had like the different, you know, um, they changed up how, or at least I've only seen like the now I've personally only seen people play the first chapter and the second chapter, and that's it. Okay, um, uh, I've never seen anybody play the third or fourth chapters. Um, but at the same time, you know, maybe, maybe I'll play it at some point, you know, um, that it'd be an interesting, uh, horror, uh, you know, Halloween game maybe. Um, but, um, the, um, you know, the, the fact that it's like, you know, yeah, seven bucks per chapter. So right now, it grand total it would come out to about um, uh, twenty one bucks if you were to purchase um, the second through fourth chapters, right? And right now, the Dark Deception Deception Complete is twenty bucks. So you're only saving like about a buck right now. Um, yeah. Now, if uh, it it looks like. Um, Chapter 5 still hasn't come out yet, according to them. Or at least, uh, doesn't look like they've released it yet. Um, but I mean, if they if they say that they this... They're probably releasing it this year, but they don't have an exact date yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, but I mean, if, if that one's also 7 bucks, then, and they keep the complete version at at the 20 bucks then obviously the that the complete you know would be a um uh, would be a better deal be yeah yeah so getting more sales from there right um but i mean you know for for everything that they've done with the game you know um you know it doesn't it doesn't look too bad if you, um, you know, well, obviously the, the, you know, the first, uh, the first level is interesting. Um, but, um, but yeah, the, uh, you know, if you want to try out the other, levels that's indeed interesting but um but you know that that game right there um you know that would you you know that would be using the sound design you know a little bit more um you know based off of like the um you know, there it's basically taking Pac-Man, putting it in a 3D level, and then really enhancing the audio to really, you know, enhance the, you know, spooky feel of the game. 
So, you know, otherwise, you know, um, so far, audio can make or break the game. Indeed. Indeed. So, but, uh, um, let me get, let me kick you out so you can go get some food, my friend. And, um, yeah, and you, uh, you enjoy your game tonight. Uh, have fun. And I will catch you next time, okay? All right, man. Take care. Bye. Bye. And that's going to be it for our Unreal study session there, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that um, that video. Uh, we will be continuing on with the attenuation listener focus, um, hopefully tomorrow, um, if everything goes well. Um, and we will, um, we will go on from there. Um, tomorrow, uh, gameplay wise, if you're, if, if you're interested, um, you know, Blackheart and I will be doing some, uh, Genshin Impact. Um, so tomorrow, if you're, if you're like, you know, watching the very end of this video, tomorrow will be, you know, some more Pega study session, the Unreal study session. Uh, for me, it'll be, um, well, actually, you know, for me, it'll be the PEGA certification study, the Unreal study session, video uploads, and, um, and then, um, Kenshin Impact, and then, you know, uh, Blackheart will be joining us for the Unreal and the Genshin, so, um, but yeah, that's going to be it for... Uh, today's Unreal. Uh, thank you very much for uh, stopping by and joining us for today. Uh, didn't have any chatters myself, but that's okay. Um, I still appreciate anybody that was just kind of lurking lurking in the background. Uh, hopefully you had a great time. Hopefully um, you found something interesting in this study session. But that's going to be it for, uh, for that. So take care. Have a good night. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And I'll catch the strangers next time.